Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. I'm mugless again, but I didn't come empty handed. First though, we've got an awesome show to share with all of you. So I hope you are ready. I hope your week is going quite swell. Mine has been all over the place, man. You don't even wanna know what has been going on behind the scenes. Actually, maybe you do. Maybe I'll tell you in a different episode. But for now, we got to cover big news for the Sonic franchise and Nintendo Switch. Big news for the Pokemon franchise and Nintendo Switch. The Switch OLED dock is now available to buy if you want to make a little upgrade. And we also have new reports about the major Switch outage coming to a conclusion. Thank goodness gracious, as well as Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 maybe being very far away, according to new insider reports. Eek. So what's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hope you're all doing absolutely wonderful. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoy the show. We're now in the 200s. It's 201. And yesterday, I released some really sweet commemorative special edition merch. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description down below. It's super fun and helps spread my positive message of make every morning a good morning. And y'all let me know during your morning in the comments down below what you think about today's topics. Before we get to story number one, I wanted to do something fun. I got an advent calendar for us, all right? This is pretty cool. I know it's December 8th. I'm a little bit maybe, you know, kind of out of, uh, out of order here, but it's okay. We're going to kick things off with this Office Funko Pop advent calendar. I thought this would be fun as another little December treat because the month is my favorite. It's got my birthday, it's got the holidays, and it's got whatever's inside this green package. I'm a major Office fan. I've seen every episode like, I don't know, at least 10 times. My whole family loves it. It's something special that we all do together when we get together. And I thought this was adorable. It was on a super big Black Friday sale. So let's see who we got on the eighth day. On the eighth day of Christmas, my office calendar gave to me Angela with her sprinkles. Don't put him in the freezer. Even if he's dead, you'll receive the wrath of an angsty, angry, uptight Angela. Also, the party planning committee is run really poorly. I, I nominate myself to take over. I love the holidays. And I also hope I love the Game Awards coming tomorrow. They're coming up quick, and I know the show is a lot of advertisements, but it also promises a lot of reveals. And Jeff Keighley continues to spill out the jar of monkeys, and now we know that Sonic is gonna have a substantial portion of the show. All right, they're gonna be dropping the new trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the new movie, which pretty good video game movie adaptation. Did you see the first Sonic? This one, new poster with Tails and Sonic flying on his little plane. And then we got Jim Carrey doing mad skills in the background. But they're also gonna be showing off a new trailer for Sonic Frontiers, which is the new Sonic game that we've discussed multiple times on this show. There were rumors and leaks that have basically been confirmed at this point that Sega is working on a 2022 open world, big new twist for 3D Sonic. Now, some of the early reports weren't too hot. They said the game wasn't coming together all that well, but it's been some time, and now they have a chance to really show it uh, from their own mouths, from their own eyes. They can tell us about this game without it being leaked out there, and I'm excited to see where Sonic is going. I, I don't love Sonic, but I think there's a chance for this game to level up, and hopefully it can do so on the Switch, and hopefully the Game Awards has a lot of fun in store let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be watching and if you're excited for Sonic Frontiers or Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now, there might be two Sonics at the Game Awards, but one thing you don't need two of is a Lexar play card. My friends at Lexar make the absolute best memory card for Nintendo Switch. It's the fastest, the safest, and the most reliable. And you probably only need one because they come in such gargantuan sizes. You can grab this thing up to one terabyte of storage, and after recent Switch online outages, that means you'd keep your entire games library secure with you on your system. So definitely click the link in the description down below to check them out. Every time you click, it helps support the channel. And they genuinely are fantastic people making a fantastic memory card product. Now let's talk about that Switch online outage. Yesterday, as you probably saw, many different circles were affected by Amazon's AWS services being down. 
Their USA East 1 server was kaput, and it meant that things like Riot Games weren't accessible. Even Disney World was having problems with mobile ordering and certain features of their parks. And yes, Nintendo Switch Online was down in the dumps. You couldn't access the eShop, you couldn't access multiplayer, you couldn't download your games that were stored up there in the cloud. Well, this lasted for quite a while beyond when I went to bed. And finally, the outage ended around 12.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time early this morning. All services have since been recovered and are back up and you should be able to play your games normally and with good functionality. Hopefully we don't have another outage soon. I mentioned in my video last night that December sometimes sees outages just because so many people are playing Switch. But hopefully this hiccup allows them to kind of focus and make sure things are good. I'm glad Amazon's back up. It's a little bit concerning how much Amazon controls, but yeah, that was a pretty long outage. 13 or so hours of Switch being oops. What clearly wasn't an oops though, was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Those remakes headed up by ILCA, first time leaving development for the Pokemon company, they did gangbusters, and I frankly can't believe this. All right, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl sold six million copies during launch week. Now, if you remember, that's the same exact number of copies that Pokemon Sword and Shield sold back at the initial launch of Gen 8. So a new gen and a remake, redo, re, not all that exciting, sold the same. Granted, the Switch install base is far larger than it was when Zacian and Zamazenta entered the scene, but it is impressive, incredible, and almost downright silly that Pokemon has such selling power. Now, I wonder how Legends Arceus is going to do. It's not mainline, but it's doing some mainline type stuff, actually making major upgrades and changes to a system that really hasn't seen many changes. But is it the tried and true formula that fans love or will they be eager for something new? We now are going to have three sets of Pokemon games on Switch in the top 10 Switch sellers. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are on their way up. Six million copies for a first time lead developer. They must be party city up in their offices. That is incredible. Kudos to them. I mean, despite the issues, despite the giant patch, despite the sort of lackluster set of new features, um, they still were insanely successful. Some of you will probably say, hey, don't support that because they really should have done more. But alas, Pokemon is unstoppable. No matter what you or I say, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Sword and Shield, and now Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are mega hits on Switch. And three of the top 10 Switch games will now be Pokemon games from all different eras. Let's Go is way back at the beginning. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is somewhere in the middle. And then Sword and Shield, the newest entries, all of them sold a ton of copies. And again, I ask you, do you think Pokemon Legends Arceus will lean more towards the mainline series in terms of sales? or more towards something like new Pokemon Snap Pokemon Mystery Dungeon as a spin-off. How will fans view this as marketing ramps up? And that game is out in about six weeks. You don't have to wait six weeks though if you'd like to upgrade your Nintendo Switch dock. And as they stated a long time ago, the Switch OLED dock is available separately for you to purchase if you want to pimp out your OG Switch while not forking over 350 for the OLED. Now the Switch OLED dock is snazzy looking. It's got a nice form factor. It's easier to open up that back flap and it does have a LAN port. So I think this thing is probably only worth the $70 if you need the LAN port, if you need a wired connection. If you don't, I mean, maybe you just want an all white dock. They're selling this in black and white varieties for 70 bucks. It's, it's, it's probably just not a smart purchase. It doesn't come with an AC adapter. It doesn't come with an HDMI cable. It comes with nothing, just the dock. And yes, this dock can receive dock updates, but we haven't really seen that be put into play yet. So probably not gonna be something huge. And let me assure you, they're not gonna be delivering 4K mysteriously one night to your dock upgrade. So I don't think this is an upgrade you need to make, but if you are interested, you do need another dock. You want one, I guess, for like the living room or something. Know that it doesn't come with the cords, which is strange, but you can buy it now from Nintendo's official store for $69.99 in the US and different prices, obviously in different regions. Let's talk about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, because our best chance at new Zelda information, trailer, gameplay, goodness, is tomorrow at the Game Awards. Remember, Jeff Keighley teased a big reveal that he's been working on for two and a half years, and the super sleuths of the internet calculated that that was when Breath of the Wild 2 was first revealed at E3 2019. 
I still think there's a high chance that Zelda shows up at the Game Awards, but industry insider and journalist Jeff Grubb with his delicious beard, he's also from Detroit, so I do respect the man, he don't think Zelda's coming. Let's talk about what he does think is coming and get some predictions for Nintendo's big reveal. He was on a podcast with Nate Drake, another Nintendo insider, and they were talking about Zelda and he had this to say. He said, I'm on the no side. The E3 trailer actually is too near. It's too close. That game, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, probably is not coming out closer until the end of next year, if it comes out in 2022 at all. And so yeah, no, if they do, what happens is we get the name and they show us a trailer that explains why the name is so significant. Maybe that's ready and that would be different from what they showed at E3. But I still think the next time we see that game probably will be E3 or a direct dedicated to Zelda a few months before. So Jeff Grubb is saying that he thinks Zelda is so far out there, they ain't ready to show more. Why drop the name and the secrets that it supposedly holds a full year before the game comes out? I think everybody is starting to come to terms with the fact that this is not an early 2022 game. It's not a summer 2022 game. It's not even like a cool September release. This is probably Nintendo's big holiday November drop if delays don't set in, because we're still dealing with a world where that happens very frequently. Nonetheless, could Zelda appear at the Game Awards? Jeff Grubb and Nate Drake think no, but hey, they're just making predictions, so don't get too deflated. I still think it's a fine time. And yes, Nintendo has said that the name does hold some mysteries, and there's some things about the name that they don't want to reveal yet because it would reveal too much about the game, but I think this is the perfect place for that story trailer. As I mentioned about a week ago, I think it all lines up, and I think Keeley would love to have a big Nintendo reveal. Even if the game is a year away, Nintendo loves to drum up enthusiasm for their tentpole titles. And look how often and how long they were teasing the original Breath of the Wild. That was a long way coming, back when we thought it was just a Wii U game before we knew the Switch existed. So while I understand their logic, I'm gonna say I'm still Team Link showing up at the Game Awards. Now, Jeff Grubb believes that it's much more likely we would see a different Nintendo title and they were talking about the Metroid Prime remaster that's been heavily rumored. We've covered that in the show, and I'm really excited to see what Nintendo does with like their own kind of remake of a really cool game. But they don't think that one will be shown either. Instead, this podcast predicts, Jeff Grubb and Nate Drake, that we'll be seeing Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That is their best guess for what Nintendo shows. And, and I hope they're wrong. Look, I know there's a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles fans out there, and I'm sure that game is going to be impressive. It's poised to be the biggest ever in the franchise with tons of enemies on screen looking quite lovely and going to be a big, huge, many, many hour adventure. But I don't think that moves the needle as much as showing something like Breath of the Wild 2, obviously, or even the Metroid Prime Redux. I, I, those are the kind of games I want to see. And I hope that Nintendo gives Jeff Keighley the respect for his Game Awards show that he seems to have earned just about everywhere else. I know Nintendo loves to keep things close to their chest and do things at their own presentations, their own directs, their own E3s, as Jeff Grubb mentioned. But I do hope that this year, that's been a little wonky, that's the time that we're in, I hope Nintendo wants to end things quite strongly. And this holiday season was super strong with the Pokemon remake, but we still are waiting for like Nintendo's true next big megaton drop, the one that gets the entire industry just singing the praises of the big end and that game is Zelda, what better way than to show it off when you have millions and millions and millions of eyeballs watching way more than a direct. Let's be honest, show it off, Nintendo. I hope we see it, and I'd love to know in the comments down below if you lean more like Jeff Grubb and don't think Zelda is ready to go, you think they're going to save it for E3? That's still seven months away, holy crap. Or if you believe that we're going to get to see some of Zelda tomorrow night. Obviously, I'll have it covered for you. I'll let you know as soon as it drops. I'll be bringing you the news, whatever they show, Mario, Zelda, Bayonetta, Metroid, or Xenoblade Chronicles, maybe even more than one. Reggie is gonna be at the show. I hope they have some big things cooked up. Keeley says four or five trailers on the level of the Elden Ring reveal, which was a big deal. I'm ready for some big deals, and I hope Nintendo has a substantial presence I'm really, really excited for this show. Thank you all for being excited for my show. I appreciate you being here with Good Morning Mario every morning. I hope it genuinely does make your morning a better morning. And I'm sorry I'm a bit out of sorts. Like I said, things have been kind of hectic, chaotic, and a little bit just 
all over the place. So I'll be back with the poll tomorrow. I'll see you guys all with a new show tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here. Check out that merch. If you're interested, hit that like button on your way out if you had fun. And make sure y'all staying safe, staying healthy, staying happy, staying positive out there. Spread a little love and kindness. It'll come back to you probably like two, three, four, five, ten full. Trust me, it works out that way. And I'll work it out with another episode tomorrow. Until that time, thanks again, everybody. Love you lots. Switch Force, out.